Welcome to the Daily Debate uh, live here on Now TV International. I'm Tagreed Hussain and I have uh, the pleasure of your company for the coming hour. We'll be uh, remembering together the days of glory, the glory days and uh, the days of dignity and pride. Uh, in October, we usually revive the spirit of victory. Uh, October, the month of victory, the month of pride, the month where we uh, remember together uh, all those behind the victory, all those behind this sense of pride that uh, we Egyptians are enjoying today. Uh, for the spirit of October, we pay salute today to the Egyptian armed forces, in both the times of war and also the time of peace, and also the time of development for Egypt, where Egypt today is embarking on a new phase uh, of development, on a new chapter in its history. So this is the spirit of October that we always need uh, to re revive and to commemorate. A big salute to the souls of the martyrs uh, who really uh, made uh, us all proud today and also with their blood, they wrote with their blood a new chapter of Egypt's history. Today we uh, salute uh, all the heroes of October. One of the heroes of October is uh, Major General Hussein Abderrez, uh, renowned military expert, one of the heroes who had really witnessed those precious moments of Egypt history. Well, General, thank you so much for being here. Uh, yeah, welcome. And I'm really happy to be with you in this uh, glorious day. And um, I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate the Egyptian people, uh, the army, uh, my colleague, uh, the heroes of October. Uh, on this occasion, wishing all of them um, the best and um, many happy returns. Thank you so much. Well, uh, we're going to talk more about those precious moments. Let's first see this report uh, highlighting the timeline of uh, Egypt's great victory, celebrating October, celebrating victory, and says a sense of pride for all Egyptians. Stay with us. On October 6, Egypt and the Arab world celebrated the 42nd anniversary of the October War. 42 years ago, the Egyptian and Syrian armies launched a surprise attack on Israeli positions on the southern and eastern fronts, namely in Sinai and on the Golan Heights. At 1400 CLT Saturday, 6 of October, 200 bombers flew over the Suez Canal en route to destroy Israeli positions deep in Sinai, while 4,000 pieces of the Egyptian field artillery blew away from the fortifications that Israel had built along the eastern bank of the canal to prevent the Egyptian army from launching an all-out attack to regain Sinai from Israeli occupation that dated back to the Six-Day War of June 1967. At 2 o'clock afternoon of the 6th of October, more than 200 Egyptian planes took off from 20 airports all over the state. Upon accurate agreements made under the Air Force's command, the huge number of planes managed to pass the confrontation line on the Suez Canal at one moment, and on very low heights, the flocks of bombers and medium bombers were flying under the protection of fighter planes that were used in the airstrikes concentrated on Israeli targets deeply in Sinai. At 2.20, the Egyptian planes went back after finishing their mission through specific aviation tracks were defined by the commanders of the air forces and air defense according to time and altitude. The strike achieved its target successfully and Egypt lost 11 aircrafts. One of them was for Atif al-Sadeh, brother of the late president Anwar al-Sadeh. At the same time, more than 2,000 artillery of different types along the front bombarded Israeli points on the eastern front of the canal, which continued for 53 minutes. At the same time, the Egyptian Second Army forces under leadership of General Saad al-Din Ma'moun and the Third Army under the leadership of General Abdel Menai Mosul crossed the canal successfully by different kinds of rubbers and wooden boats. The Egyptian Engineering Corps succeeded to build the first heavy bridge about 8 o'clock in the evening and after 8 hours at 10.30 o'clock, they made 60 passage in the dust shield along the front built eight heavy bridges, four light bridges, and 30 ferry boats. In order to deter Egypt from crossing the canal, the Israelis built the bar leave line from the north to south and a sand dam and fortifications and napalm tubes under the water to put the waterway of the canal on fire in case of the Egyptian forces would attempt to cross. 
A former Israeli chief of staff had braided that even a nuclear bomb would not destroy this defense line. Another chief of staff in Israel said afterwards that the Israeli forces would break the bones of Egyptians if they would ever dare to cross the canal and penetrate the Barleed line. The whole idea of those defense lines were to deter Egypt's high command from contemplating breaching the canal and taking the fortifications on the eastern bank by force. Simultaneously, military engineers created holes in the wall held as one of the strongest in the world using water hoses. They also built bridges for Egyptian tanks and heavy equipment to cross into the east of the canal. The fall of Barleve Line and liberation of Al Qantara East City and severe battles between the Egyptian and Israeli armies at the depth of 19 and a half kilometer along the front and the east of the Suez Canal through 6, 7, 8 October, Israel lost 400 tanks and many been killed and wounded. The truth is that without the enormous American airlift to Israel during the war, Israel would have known an unprecedented defeat. In less than 10 days, the United States flew almost 220,000 tons of armaments, munition and 80 planes, half of which were Fathom fighter planes. Thus, the Egyptian army was fighting both Israel and the United States at the same time. The Israeli strategy after the June defeat centered on pressuring Egypt to accept a peace deal with Israel along Israeli conditions, that is, a withdrawal by Israel from Sinai, but not to the June borders, a peace treaty and the right of Israeli vessels to use the Suez Canal. President Gamal Abdel Nasser refused such conditions and began rebuilding the army via a massive rearmament program with the help of the former Soviet Union. And to prepare the newly organized army who ordered what is known as the War of Attrition from 1969 to 1970, a war that cost Israel heavy losses in terms of men and equipment. Before his death on September 28, 1970, Egypt successfully installed an advanced air defense system that proved very effective and deadly for Israelis F-4 fighter planes known as Fathoms. When President Anwar Sadat came to power after the passing away of President Gamal Abdel Nasser, he tried to find an opening that would set in motion a process whereby Egypt would regain control of Sinai in return for ending the state of war with Israel and ultimately sign a peace treaty between the two countries. But there was a misconception in Washington that circles that Egypt would not fight. The fact of the matter is that neither the United States or Israel were interested in carrying out Security Council Resolution 242 that has laid the basis for all international efforts aimed to comprehensive peace settlement in the Middle East. Going to war became more than a necessity. It was to be the only option to Egypt and other Arab countries to liberate their territories from the Israeli occupation. Uh, we're back and we're still uh, uh, definitely retrieving that uh, great spirit of pride and dignity, the spirit of October, uh, the decision of the crossing and more with Major General Hussein Abderrez, uh, one of the prominent heroes of October War victory. Uh, General Abderrez, many happy returns and let's remember together those moments, the timing itself and the decision of the crossing. How was it like reflected while you were in the, in the battlefield? How did you know that it was the right timing? to move forward uh, as a battalion I, I, I mean yeah. uh, uh, as you know you know uh, President Sadat you know after uh, uh, the ceasefire according to uh, Rogers initiative mm -hmm. in August 1970 uh, he realized that there is no other way but to fight right and if you remember you know there was uh, the, the detent policy Mm. Uh, between the United States and the Soviet Union, uh, where they are, uh, they agreed, you know, upon not to uh, jeopardize uh, the settlement policy between the two uh, big powers, and not to allow to any regional conflict to affect their mm. relation. Uh, 
Right. So he realized that there is no way mm -hmm. uh, diplomatically, you know, uh, to solve this problem but to fight. Mm -hmm. So he uh, make all the preparation necessary uh, to have the armed forces ready uh, for the battle and to exert uh, a great effort mm -hmm. uh, in, um, with uh, the military commanders, you mm -hmm. know, uh, through two years, mm -hmm. uh, were very, very severe uh, uh, years and we exerted uh, a lot of efforts mm -hmm. to terrain our troops and to uh, formation and to put the plan and to put the studies, you know, uh, to solve all the problems uh, mm. uh, facing uh, our uh, plan to cross the canal and to destroy our left line. So the main goal was to uh, break down the Israeli, if you remember this, uh, the Israeli uh, security theory. Right, you that know, the army yes, of Israel is invincible. Uh, about the, the, the mm. secure borders. Yeah. And um, President Sadat, he asked the armed forces to be ready mm -hmm. just to um, cross the canal and to uh, capture a power left line mm -hmm. and to, um, um, to cause a heavy casualties among the Israelis as much as we could. Mm -hmm. And we started this long and uh, found studies uh, to the canal, to the atmosphere, uh, to the enemy, yeah. uh, the strong points, the weak mm -hmm. points. Mm -hmm. And according to these studies, we put our plan, you know, to uh, cross the canal on the 6th of October. Yeah. And everybody knows why the 6th of October. And everybody also knows why. Uh, um, uh, the crossing uh, the, in the midday. Right. You know, why we chose this time to close the canal. Mm -hmm. So it was a big surprise uh, for all of us. If it, and I myself, I didn't know the exact time of crossing mm -hmm. uh, till the uh, at 12 uh, of uh, 6th of October uh, when the, um, the commander of the brigade, we are crossing through its troops. Mm. He told me that it's just after two hours uh, right. we will cross the canal. And uh, as I told you before, I was the first mm. to cross the canal because I showed the, the, the time few minutes before the exact time mm. planned for my units to cross the canal. Right. Because I just came to my mind to cross the canal blew the, the, the airplane when they fly mm -hmm. uh, so over, they were just yes, like an, over, an over Kamtara, oh, yeah. and above Kamtara. Mm -hmm. So I chose this uh, moment to cross the canal because the observers, the Israeli observer mm -hmm. on, on the other side will be hiding. Mm -hmm. When they saw the, the airplane, they will uh, go in their bunkers and hide them. Right. So this was the appropriate time for me to cross the canal and I did it. Mm -hmm. I crossed the canal in that time just two minutes uh, before uh, uh, two o'clock. Yeah. I was the first to step on the uh, other bank and on the top of the, the uh, uh, sand barrier. So it was... Precious so, moment. Yes, yeah. yes. It is yeah. For me, something I do for feel for proud and all, thank you know? God. Yeah. yeah, it's mm -hmm. still fresh in my mind. Yeah. and in the minds of my uh, officers and soldiers. What were the words uttered at those precious moments, I mean, uh, and how was the, 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 the psychological situation then? The morale was very high, definitely, for achieving. Uh, it's a dream coming true. And yes, we made it. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, of course, we crossed the canal in, in Ramadan. Right. And that gave us a spiritual uh, mm -hmm. feeling. Mm -hmm. And uh, believe me, nobody uh, feel fear. You know, when I look at uh, my soldiers' eyes, uh, they uh, look at me and they give me a sensation that we, we are very mm -hmm. strong enough mm -hmm. and we will follow you. Uh, yeah. just to get Here are the moments of the crossing, by the way, General. Yeah. And, uh, this is history making for Egypt. 
uh, so, moments of victory uh, that you can remember vividly. Yeah. As a matter of yeah. fact, it is less than the actual, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the actual event. Yeah. Uh, so the smoke were covering the, the area because of the artillery and uh, uh, the, the, the shooting and shooting yeah. back. Yeah. You know, as you see, yeah. uh, when we cross the canal, you can uh, and look. And here are the planes that are covering the yes, area, as you yes, said, generally. Yes, mm -hmm. Blow this um, airplane when they uh, go to st um, for the airstrike, you know, I decided to cross the canal. So I get the benefit of this moment mm -hmm. just to, uh, to cross the canal, not to be um, uh, vulnerable for uh, any uh, mm. fire sources uh, mm -hmm. from the Israelis. Yeah. So, uh, thanks God, it just it came to my mind and uh, we, we succeeded uh, to cross the canal safely and to mount up and to uh, yeah, and the raising of the flag, those moments, and the human side of, of the story. Tell us more about.